And just before we're almost out of the Atlantic's clutches, there's one more surprise for us. I hit all the reports. I wasn't sure he was underway. When a giant tanker decides to get underway unexpectedly and force us to a giant circle just outside the break wall. We're leaving the San Blas today after cruising this tropical paradise for a whole two months. It feels too short though, but with a canal crossing on the horizon, it's time to leave. We're taking heartfelt memories with us though, and our last week here was one for the books. Red stick battered fish and, and, the garlic. and the garlic sauce and the, and the stick bread. <laughs> so, for our last day here in the San Blas, we decided to perfect things for the Pinnacle Cruise. We're going to have our big plates up and uh, it should be like a bend down the angle. To be technical, um, we still have like another day left, but we're heading, we're now heading towards the marina and therefore towards the canal. So I think we're going to make one more stop in San Blas, but I mean, we're basically on that like transportation mode now. So that's why Bill's saying it's our last day. That doesn't mean you can't have fun. Yeah. And the next spot's supposed to be pretty too, so I'm sure it will be good eye candy. Even though we don't have as much time to left to play on the beach and stuff. Okay, anyway, I gotta film this. <laughs>
So since we're going pretty far downwind, you can see how we have it pretty sheeted tight to the pet to the sprit. I'm gonna go ahead and let it fly a little bit more off. We'll get better shape for downwind sailing. So up she goes. I feel like I'm opening up the belly of the sail. I feel like it's power up. Yeah. Get a little more lift. Yep. Like that angle was better when we were tighter to the wind, heading up this way. But now that we're dropping down, we want this balloon shape. My cup of coffee right here and it's gentle eight knots of breeze yeah we're actually not going upwind for a while yeah we're like every sail on the sand blast we've had to go upwind it's such a gorgeous day i wonder if the season's changing a little bit it almost feels that way the wind's got lighter a little warmer it's march now So that gnarly little reef break is not really on the charts. You gotta be extra careful when navigating in the sand bloss. Um, keep a good visual lookout and have high sun is really helpful. So the spinnaker is in the sock now, that thing we're calling the sock, you can see it finally. Oh, drop the sock down. After several hours of sailing, we arrived into a pretty spot called East Lemon Banatip, one of the westernmost islands in the San Blas, and our jump off point for tomorrow's sail, which will get us to our canal crossing point. We've got time to squeeze in one more dive before our official last day is up. So we're checking out a shipwreck at nearby Dog Island. This particular wreck is a sunken cargo ship that was beached in the late 1950s and now lays in three to six meters of super clear water. I begin at the bow of the ship before slowly moving my way aft towards the stern. It's a jumble of metal, some wood and discarded plastic jugs, and a ton of coral and small reef fish that have made this place their home over the years. I pause to watch a perfectly disguised peacock flounder fish hiding in the sand outside the wreck before continuing towards the stern. He's over here. Thank you. 
I researched into the story behind the ultimate demise of this cargo ship reveals that she sprung a leak of some kind while passing through the San Blas Islands and was taking on enough water that pumping proved ineffective. And the damage was also too great for a fix, so the captain ultimately decided to beach her while under full power in an attempt to salvage the cargo. The story goes that while some of the cargo, which included rum, was recovered and eventually reached Cologne, the remaining part of the cargo disappeared forever, and nobody knows exactly where it ended up. On our swim back from the wreck, some beautiful fish passed by. The water was incredibly clear, possibly the clearest of anywhere we dove so far in the San Blas. The grand finale to this spectacular dive was one of the most beautiful bait balls I've ever had the pleasure of swimming in. I was completely mesmerized by this enormous swarm of small fish, all moving in synchrony through the clear water. A change is coming up. I think Shelter Bay Marina, where we're ultimately heading for the canal measurement, is pretty busy. So I think uh, yeah, it's gonna be different. Yeah, last night it's a beautiful night. It's gotten a little calmer the last couple days. We did that snorkel um, today and saw the wreck. That was unexpected. Yeah, another beautiful anchorage and another fun time here, enjoying this nice weather before we leave.
It's crazy to think that this is Calico Sky's last sail in the Atlantic. We spent the last six years and over 30,000 miles exploring this ocean. We have no idea when or if we'll even be back. My memory bank is punctuated with the many milestones of our travels. My first blue water sail was in December 2016, crossing from the Chesapeake Bay to the USVIs of my good friend Ryan, who due to insurance requirements was my training skipper. From there I solo sailed around the Caribbean, getting as far south as Grenada while Grace worked one more year. My claim to fame is I'd only ate dinner alone once due to having great buddy boats. It's really a boiling lake! <laughs> From there, I sailed back to New York City and convinced Grace and our two good friends to quit their job and take our respective sailboats down to the Bahamas. After a great season in the Bahamas, we kept pushing east. First to the Caribbean, where we joined a Caribbean regatta circuit racing on our friends Pogo 12.5, and eventually across the Atlantic to the Azores. We actually crossed the Atlantic for our good friends Matt and Jessica from MJ Sailing. The Azores was one of the highlights of our trip. Oh, it got pushed up, looks like this way or this way, and then broke off. And that's what that fissure is. ourselves away from those enchanted island to meet Grace's sister Molly in Lisbon, officially closing the loop on our Atlantic crossing. From there we spent a few months in southern Portugal and Spain before finally running out of visa time and pushing on to Gibraltar. This is where we first started filming for our YouTube channel. This is how we get off the boat, folks. The rest is history, as they say, documented on YouTube. The quick recap is that we had a strong hankering for a rum cocktail and decided to sail 4,000 miles directly from Gibraltar to Grenada, skipping the customary stop in the Canaries. Hey there, right here, right there, right there to the body. Emboldened by our recent Atlantic crossings, we cruised through the Caribbean and once again to the Bahamas before making a straight jump to Lake Brador in eastern Nova Scotia. Well, it would have been a straight shot had we not experienced autopilot failure. After Canada, we once again headed south, ripped out and replaced a rotten bulkhead in Annapolis, got caught in a gnarly gale off Hatteras, and eventually got locked down for four months in the Ragged Islands when COVID hit. With international borders closed, we decided to do the north-south run up the east coast one more time, getting to the northeast corner of Maine before turning around, as usual, too late in the season. All those memories bring us to the now, leaving the Atlantic behind as we enter the breakwater for the Panama Canal that will transport us to the Pacific Ocean where new adventures await. So I'm radioing the canal authorities to gain entrance to the breakwater, that's to the Atlantic entrance of the Panama Canal. Uh, Shelter Bay Marina is behind that breakwall, so we have to ask permission. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Who are we asking permission of? Cristobal Signal Station, which I guess is a canal authority. Yeah, the wind just like picked up all yeah. our Crystal Ball Signal Station, Crystal Ball Signal Station, Sail Muscle Calico Skies, 1 2. Calico Skies, we're about 8 miles out heading to Shelter Bay Marina, uh, requesting permission to enter the breakwater when we arrive there. Okay, Copy that. Do you need me to stand by on 12 or 16? Over. He said yes. Okay, so I, I scan on 12 and 16 in case they radio us. Ah, cool. So it's a narrow like break water. You can see on the chart. Um, I'll show you guys when we get closer. But basically, like it's it's kind of a protective anchorage for all the ships before they go through the canal, and we're passing through that to get to the marina. All right, let's go on up here. How's everything so hectic all of a sudden? All of a sudden, it's white captain blowing 20 knots.
We just were serving up the seven and a half knots. That kite's got to come in soon. Wind's up. It's blowing, it's blowing 20 proof. Way big wave. Surfing. Woohoo. This guy's last time in the Atlantic Ocean, or I mean, who knows, but we're leaving once we leave this basin. The canal is right there. Um, this is the, the sea. This is the last time, like, in the open Caribbean Sea. Just before we're almost out of the Atlantic's clutches, there's one more surprise for us. I uh, can alter course. I wasn't sure he was underway. When a giant tanker decides to get underway unexpectedly and force us to a giant circle just outside the break wall. Unfortunate timing, but it's not going to stop us from completing our passage and entering the Kama waters behind the brick wall. Mm -hmm. 